It, it, it is progressing, Bob. Okay, we're live. All right, well, good afternoon. Um, welcome to Extension Horses' first how-to live series. So Extension Horses is a, is a group of collaborative university and individual uh, and industry horse specialists from around the US who love to get together and provide horse owners the best, most current research-based information that we have. So we thought during this time of online learning and remote learning, what better way uh, to celebrate that and to make lemonade out of lemons is to have a monthly Facebook Live how-to series. And I'm very pleased to have our first guest. Our first guest is Dr. Bob Coleman from the University of Kentucky. And I will uh, give him a few minutes to introduce himself. And my name is Krishona Martinson from the University of Minnesota. Dr. Bob and I have similar appointments at uh, Kentucky and Minnesota respectively, where we, among other hats we wear, we are the extension horse specialists. So we love that job. And with that, Dr. Bob, I just want to say welcome and just give maybe a few minutes for you to just provide a little bit of background on yourself. Um, if you think Minnesota is far north, just wait. So you know, provide a little background of maybe where you kind of started from and how you ended up in Kentucky. Well, thank you, Krishona, and thanks for hosting this. Uh, it's great to be a part of Extension Horses. Um, as Krishona said, it's a great group of uh, folks that have a very similar passion uh, for dealing with horse owners and horses, so it makes for a lot of fun. Um, I've been doing <clears throat> extension things, but I didn't start out as an extension. I actually started out in the feed industry in Canada. Uh, I am from Manitoba, Canada. So for those of you that might have an idea where North Dakota is, keep going north. Uh, so have uh, lived in a couple of different climates and uh, certainly that has helped probably give me some ideas about how to care for horses, but also to realize that uh, we're all in the same boat. So uh, I started out uh, when I graduated from university with my master's working in the feed industry, um, did all species and then focused on ruminant, dairy cattle and beef cattle, a little bit of sheep and, and horses, and then had the opportunity to go to Alberta, Canada, where I was the extension horse specialist there as part of the horse industry branch. Uh, the unique thing about that is, uh, is the only position like that in Canada. So, uh, well, I worked with two other gentlemen within our branch. Um, I was the only one that had the, that particular title. Uh, while I was there, I, I decided that finishing my education was important, uh, mostly important for me, uh, not any other particular reason. So I finished my PhD and while I was wrapping that up, uh, got the call from the University of Kentucky to, uh, consider applying for the position down here and uh, did and the rest is history because I got to move to a more southern climb uh, got away from winter didn't hurt my feelings a whole lot and uh, so I, I do a lot of uh, basically adult education I don't have a very uh, strong youth part of my distribution of effort and then I uh, teach a class in the spring and a class in the fall for our equine science and management under degree undergraduate degree program and probably the thing that's kind of unique is i've been doing extension work with the horse industry uh for 40 years wow dr bob that's awesome and you don't look a day over 29 i don't know yeah. how you get away with that it's all so. like smoke and mirrors <laughs> smoke <laughs> There, there, apparently there's a Zoom filter for that. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, well, um, and I think it's good to do that introduction because a lot of times I think we have young people that are joining us that are maybe considering their college path or their you know, future career path. And like you, I, I mean, I, my, I mean I, you have a degree in animal science and equine science. But you know, my degree is in agronomy, and I started out as an agronomist 
Um, it comes in handy when the vast majority of a horse's diet is forage. But, you know, look at you worked with ruminant species for a while. So I think sometimes it's important for young people to understand and students to understand you got to keep your options open, right? When it comes time to trying to get into the horse industry or get into academia or industry, or whatever your chosen path is. Because you really never know what door is going to open. And, and I think sometimes it's a little fearsome or fearful that, that we're afraid to walk through it. But I don't, I don't think we should because um, some of my cattle stuff, I, I use that uh, like you with, with forages. Um, it, it isn't always just about the horse. I, I, we, we go to educational activities to help ourselves learn. And sometimes we learn from other species or other disciplines. And uh, I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. So um, today our focus is really on how to estimate horse body weight and body condition score and why that is important. Um, you know, Dr. Bob, you and I have a long history of this. We've had some good road trips and some fun memories working on this. But the first question I have, and if you are joining live, uh, especially if you are on the extensionhorses.org Facebook page, you can simply put any questions you have into the comments. And I have that up on my other screen and I'm keeping track of that. Uh, so you can put them there um, and I will ask them to Dr. Bob as we go on. So when it comes to, so let's just start with body weight. You and I know that you can't, uh, body condition scoring, I think there's quite a few resources out there for individuals to look at and we can touch base on that later. But let's just focus on body weight. So why is knowing your horse's body weight so important? Why do we even care? Why do we even want to estimate body weight? Of course, knowing that a scale is the best, but the vast majority of horse owners will never walk their horse across the scale. So why is estimating body weight so important? Well, it, it, it is the one thing that, and, and being trained as a nutritionist, everything I do is based on body weight, everything. Um, I predict or estimate nutrient requirements. I predict intake, all of that. So I have to have a number and the horse owner has to have a number that is actually relative to, to something close to reality. Um, and I think that, you know, for a long time we would guess, uh, and you're right, you know, who has a scale close by? Uh, it, it isn't something that in a lot of places that's available. I, I find it interesting here in central Kentucky, we actually have feed companies that will go out and, and weigh your horses for you on a regular basis, but that that's unique. That's not the norm. And so we rely on it. And I know uh, now that we've got some other tools that are available to us, but certainly people would use the old method of, well, I've got a heart girth tape from my feed company, my pharmaceutical company, and wonderful. Um, they really work if your horse fits the model. But if your horse doesn't fit the model, it doesn't. And a lot of cases, those heart gear tapes, and not to, to diminish them, because if your horse weighs under 1,200 pounds, they're probably a, not a bad estimate. But if we get some of these bigger horses and, and horses have got have changed. I think that's safe to say. I mean, what we used to think that, you know, the average quarter horse was 1,100 pounds. Well, um, that boat's already left, you know, that horse has left the barn. Uh, <laughs> they're bigger than that. And so we need to have things and, and things have changed. So there was also the, the formula that was out there that you measured body length and you measured heart girth and you plugged it into a little, did a little of arithmetic and that would give you a number. Well, same thing. Those horses that were used for that formula, uh, that was a long time ago. And in some of those, we could have used a few more horses than we did to get a broader range of what the number was. So uh, not terribly useful. Uh, and as you alluded to, I mean, we worked on a project that, that does actually estimate uh, the horse's 
body weight by considering a lot more factors in how to measure the force. And we also spent a long time thinking about what particular measurements might be skewed based on the conformation of the horse. Um, thinking about quarter horses. So if we get that uh, leaner kind of reiner type horse versus that halter horse with a great big hind end, I mean, it's going to make it different. And so how can we do that? So I think the, the Healthy Horse app uh, gave us an opportunity. And as you said, we made some road trips. We've looked at an awful lot of horses. Um, I've counted it up a couple times, and I think we're in that neighborhood of somewhere between 16 or 1700 and almost 2000 horses that we have looked at and measured and thought about. So I'm pretty comfortable with the app. Is it to the pound? Eh, no. Does it have to be? No, because you're not going to feed to the pounds. So it's okay. But I think it's really helped us. The other thing that the app gave us, and I think it's a, a management tool that horse owners need to think about a lot more is, and, and we get it when we go to the doctor's office. Well, you know, maybe you could be a different weight and it would be healthier. And it's like, well, okay, well, tell me what that should be. And so they can give you a number. And so I can do the arithmetic and say, I need to lose X number of pounds. But when I look at your horse and we think, you know, it would be helpful if he could get down a little bit. And I think it's easier for horse people to, to understand the concept of your horse needs to lose X number of pounds to get to a healthier body weight. Um, saying, and, and I know we see it all the time as people say, well, my horse is a little thin. I think he needs to gain 300 pounds. And it was like, you have no idea what 300 pounds on that horse would look like because we've just measured him and he weighs a thousand pounds. You don't want him to weigh 1300 pounds, but the reason they have a number in their head, I, I think it's to make them comfortable, but I don't think they get it, that something that's a little more accurate. And so um, I'm a pretty big proponent and a promoter, not just because that was part of the Healthy Horse app, but because of what it does. And, you know, it does force you as a horse owner to be a little bit uh, aware, uh, as we should be. Uh, you, you have to take your measurements correctly. You need to uh, assess your horse correctly. Um, I know we did one, and it was a thoroughbred horse, but boy, this horse looked like a warm blood. Uh, it really fit the warm blood profile. So we actually plugged it into the warm blood formula and uh, we missed the, the weight on the scale by seven pounds. So I felt pretty good about knowing that if I utilize my ability to look at a horse, I can measure them correctly uh, and diligent about that, that it does give me a really good number. Now, when we plugged it into the thoroughbred number, I think we were out by maybe 20 some pounds, 25 pounds. So it still wasn't, um, it wasn't terrible. Uh, and it gave me a number that again, if I'm going to consult to this person on how to feed your horse, I know. So now I can tell them that, you know, that, that dewormer that's good for 1300 pounds will work for your 1300 pound horse. Uh, it's not maybe what you want to do if your horse only weighs a thousand because now we're overdosing and we know that that's a problem. Uh, I think just being a better horse owner and more accurate, particularly as we have people that are uh, kind of like the rest of us are, are learning as we go and every day is a new experience and, and it's kind of uh, I think fun to be engaged in my horse care. Uh, and when I work with people, cause you know, I do a lot of rations for people based on a hay analysis. And I have now finally learned to ask the question correctly. I always used to just sort of think, well, how big's your horse? Well, he's 15 hands. It's like, well, that doesn't help me. How much does your horse weigh? And being able to 
send them to a place like the Healthy Horse app, uh, or if they can go buy a heart girth tape and do it correctly, uh, they do have to follow the directions because not all heart girth, heart girth tapes are designed to be measured in exactly the same way. And so you have to realize what, what formula, how did they create the formula to generate this tape? And if you've got some of those bigger horses, there's not very many tapes out there that will take care of them. But the, but the app will, and I think it's something that, uh, and it shows right, right there on your phone. Uh, it's not me telling you anything, it's you learning about your horse. And that's the best part about it. Yeah, so Bob, just to recap and to kind of clarify some questions that we have online. Um, sorry, I'm looking at three screens, so I'm not like, I'm just trying to multitask the best I can. So just to recap, the reason that we, knowing body weight is really important or estimating body weight is important, and you touched on all these, is number one, for nutrition reasons, for balancing rations, estimating intake, how much your horse should eat, so the nutrition bucket. You mentioned appropriate use of dewormers. Mm -hmm. And then you also just mentioned monitoring body weight, right? So whether it's an increase or a decrease. And one of the questions online is, how often should you estimate horse body weight? That's a great question. And I think the fact that we have such good tools, um, I would probably be doing it quarterly. And, and I think that way because of the changes in season that could very much have an impact on how the horse's body weight might change. So in Minnesota, in Alberta, um, we're now probably thinking about getting ready for winter because it's coming, like it or not, it's coming. Uh, when it'll get here, I don't know, but I, I might wanna be more prepared and have know what my horses are doing and and, when we talk about body condition score, how that adds into it, but I would probably be doing it once a quarter. Uh, if there's some significant changes in your horse's lifestyle, um, I now have more time to ride. So instead of riding twice a week, I'm riding four, maybe five times a week, or we've hit the competitive show season. And so we're, we're riding hard during the week and then we're showing all weekend which can really take a toll on your horse. Um, I think it'd be worthwhile to, to maybe pick it up and just use it as a tool to say, okay, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, once a year is not good enough. Uh, it, that puts you in the same, yeah, we can take our body weight and do our Coggins test on the same day and it's gonna give you the same answer, good for today. But I, I would probably, once a quarter uh, would be great. And because we have the tools, uh, it would be great. Think about it though, if you're doing it going into winter, uh, show hair coat versus a winter hair coat uh, might be a little different. So think about making sure that you are taking care of doing your measurements the best you can. And, and that's the nice thing, excuse me, about the Healthy Horse app is the fact that there are more metrics, more, more things that we've measured that go into that to uh, sort of re reduce the, the fact that one particular measurement could cloud the issue, which would happen with the, the other old formula where it was heart girth twice. Well, you know, a great big hairy horse that you're not getting that thing as tight as you did before could change and maybe give you a false impression of what you're doing. So that's what I would do. Yeah, and, and I, I just, so I just wanna summarize for the person that asked, and actually it was one of our questions that we had you know, thought about asking anyways. Um, you should estimate horse body weight quarterly, at least quarterly. Some would say monthly, depending on if you're in an area where you have a lot of season changes or if your horse is changing work um, so again, it's easy to do. It just takes a few minutes. Just put it in with your routine, put a reminder on your calendar. So moving in more specifically, there's questions more specifically on how to use the different weight estimation tools. So let's just start out with the weight. So obviously we know the scale is the optimum 
but so few horse owners have access to a scale. We're going to set that aside for a second. Obviously, if you have access to a scale, you know what your horse weighs, assuming the scale is calibrated and properly working. So I think most individuals are familiar with the weight tapes. And you had talked about that numerous times, Dr. Bob, but why don't you just go to more detail and just, um, just a little bit more about how you use it. And I, I've, you mentioned, you know, they can be accurate if you read the directions and use correctly, correctly. And I would also echo and say that if the same individual is using it on the same horse repeatedly. So okay. just maybe a little bit more around specifically weight tapes and how they're used. So, so weight tapes are, are based on a, uh, a calibration equation um, that none of us put, you know, thank goodness for the weight tape because none of us want to do that much arithmetic. Uh, you know, you'd have to have more than just your phone to do a calculation. But they, they're, it's based on heart girth and changes in heart girth as it relates to changes in body weight. And so there is a relationship and, and we know that it exists. It's not as, in a lot of cases, definitive as we might like it to be. Uh, but again, there's lots of people have weight tapes. Um, I've actually used some of them and some different ones and measured some different horses uh, and then uh, put them on the scale because I had a scale. <clears throat> and the variation was everything from this pretty close to not even close. And part of that comes back to the, the what we talked about is the fact that it the population of horses that were used to develop the equation for the weight tape makes all the difference in the world. Plus, whether, how do you do that? Do you run it over top of the withers or do you run it at the back of the withers? So that means that you've got a little bit more of an angle in how you're going around the heart girth because that makes quite a difference. If you've got a, uh, a horse that has no withers, something mutton withered, it won't make a difference at all. Uh, but if you have a really high withered uh, thoroughbred type horse or a high withered you know, saddlebred or, or walking horse, that's gonna add a lot of distance and then have an impact on how it relates to it. So there are the company ones. There are also some commercial hard girth tapes that you can buy uh, that come in a, a nice package. They have nice directions. Um, if, if I pack one, that's actually the one that I pack because uh, it's more resilient to living in the bottom of my backpack. Um, the ends don't come off. It's, it's, a little, it's a little easier to use. It has uh, a greater number of gradations. So I can get to an answer better. But the other thing is, is that you have to remember if you're doing it, same place, same tension, same making sure things as simple as the old Nellie's standing square, that she's standing up and that you are getting a consistent measurement. Now, we could argue, well, so it's out by 50 pounds. Okay, um, as long as you appreciate that it's not gonna be deadly accurate, but that you keep track of the ranges and how things change over time. So that means if we're going to put a uh, notice in our phone to, to do something, we should put in the notes that on the 22nd of September, we measured old Nellie and the heart said 1210. So that when we go in October and measure her, that we're not trying to remember. And you can say, well, I will remember. And it's like, you might, I know I won't. And if you've got more than one horse, I promise you, it will be hard. And it's not fair to yourself to try to do that. So do it when you do it. If you want to do it once a month, more power to you. Write it down, keep track of it, and be very consistent and careful that you are doing it the same every time. And pick the one that works the best for you. So that is just excellent advice. And I'm glad you said about the horse standing square. The horse should also be in a fairly level ground. So all of those things really matter. Now, we have a couple of questions about the equations and where to find them.
but let's back up a step and just talk about the equations in general. So you've mentioned this a few times. There are now multiple equations that have been developed for different types of horses. So I think there's one for light horses, there's one for ponies and one for minis. And all of these have the same format where it is Hartger squared times body length. And I'll let you explain how to take the body length. That's not the same as a blanket. And then it's divided by a number that is specific to that type of horse. Um, I believe you can find a lot of these online. I'm sure there's some extension resources where they exist. But Bob, let's just take a little bit of a deeper dive into those very specific equations, how to do that. And again, that body length and heart girth measurement just need to be consistent. Yeah, and, and, and they have grown. I mean, for the longest time, in, at least in my career, it was heart girth squared times body length divided by 330, and that gave you a weight in pounds. Um, what horses they came from, I never asked that question. But uh, certainly uh, the heart girth was to be taken from most of those at the back of the withers, not over the top, not at the highest point of the withers, but more at the back. Uh, so there was a little bit of an angle to that. Uh, the body length is the hard one because it is, and you got to feel for the point of the shoulder. So you got to put your finger there. And then the other one goes to the point of the buttock. And again, you got to feel for that. And that can be, I saw, you know, you see a lot of people. And as you said, you're not measuring for a blanket where people would go to the middle of the tail or go from the middle of the chest to the middle of the tail. And now we've got horses that, you know, are a mile long and half a mile wide. And it's like, that's not reasonable. And, uh, and you have to remember, because I have seen people do this, where uh, they multiplied the body length by body length and divided it, you know, by, they used the wrong, the wrong number got squared. And that really throws things off. So yeah, if you, you look at it, uh, and again, make sure if you're taking the measurements, because things like body length should never change. <laughs> I mean, if your horse is 76 inches long and he weighs an 80 blanket, that shouldn't change. So if you're doing it consistently, instead of a heart girth once a month, uh, and this month, old Nelly is 76 inches long and next month she's 78 or 79. It's like something's not right and you need to appreciate that. So I think regardless of what, whether it's 330 or whatever the number, the factor that they use to change it to the correct type of horse. Yeah, and there, there's a few of them that are out there. Uh, it's been interesting and we'll come back to it in a second about how the healthy horse app has actually showed up with a lot of those research projects. Uh, and it really does come down to knowing what kind of horse you have. But I think, you know, make sure that it, the, the number from a body weight standpoint that should really change should be your heart gear if it's going up or down. It's no different than the heart gear tape. So be really careful. The other thing is go buy a 120 inch dressmaker's tape measure. Um, don't try doing it with a metal uh, carpenter's tape measure because that will freak your horse out. It's also really hard to use and it just, and it won't work. Um, I promise you, it won't work. I have scared more horses with a tape measure just when they hear it crinkling and rattling and it doesn't have to be anywhere near them. Uh, so don't do that. Don't try measuring with a string and then doing that because you never get it right. Uh, so you can buy the, those dressmaker tape measures. They're 120 inches. Uh, I think they cost $1.99. Um, I have five or six of them. Mine are yellow. I have my name on them uh, <laughs> because I think I might switch to pink so nobody will take them. But uh, I think that's the thing to do. So with anything, just be consistent in your measurements and write them down so that when you go month after month or every quarter, uh, that those numbers that should have changed will and those that shouldn't better not have. 
Um, and you know that that's that is an excellent point. And all of the data collection that you and I have done developing the app that we'll talk about next, it is amazing. Horses are always bigger around than they are long using that measurement. Yep. So. And I think people are always surprised by that. And I, I think the other thing that just sort of the relationship uh, really has, and, and that's why the, the app is the way it is, is that it's done by type because there are so many type constraints that, and, and it's not, that, I mean, they're, they are what they are. I mean, we've got them that way because that's what we want. And I, you pick your, your favorite, um, but we saw that, you know, we saw it with the draft horses where it really showed up that, you know, these are really big horses, but boy, they're a long way around <laughs> and they weren't as long as everybody thought they were. So that becomes the issue. And, and I, again, with the app, when you look at it, um, it's pretty user-friendly. You don't have to remember uh, where to measure because there's a diagram right on it. It reminds you every time. And I look at it every time because I want to be consistent and accurate. And it just is part of the process. But um, there have been some papers that have come out uh, recently where they look at you know doing it different ways. And when it came right down to it, the vast majority of the times for a wide variety of horse types, the Healthy Horse app kept coming up that it was pretty darn close. Um, was it always exactly as the scale? Nope. And it's not going to be. It, it can't be. Uh, but it was, it was really good. And, and certainly reading some of those papers, it was very heartening because am I biased about the Healthy Horse app? You bet, you bet. I'm pretty protective of it, it's kind of like a child. But at the end of the day, with the amount of work that went into it and the, the care and, and concern, um, I think really helped us a lot. And uh, I, I have gone out, I, <clears throat> as I say, I carry a tape with me. Um, I carry a, a, a wither height stick with me. Um, and, you know, when you think about, again, it comes back to the being able to give direction on how to measure the horses. Um, so our body length measurement is different than for a blanket. It's different for the other equations, but it's also something that's very defined. Um, you don't have to worry, <clears throat> you know, you should be able to figure out that perpendicular part to the point of the buttock. I mean, we can do that we know we're going to measure height to the third thoracic vertebrae. And you can feel for those and you can figure out where to do it. Heart girth was right over top of the third thoracic vertebrae. It sounds like a broken record, but it was to, to be able to say, do it this way and be consistent. How do you measure the circumference of the neck? It's from the pole to the third thoracic vertebrae and halfway in between. Uh, I know I think that was my job a lot of times because I was the one tall enough on those draft horses to reach the pole because some of them were pretty tall. And if your horse puts his head in the air, uh, you want to be able to do it. And, and again, it, those are landmarks that you can feel for. So you know that you're in the right place. Whereas the other is like, you know, where do I put this heart girth tape? Where do I measure from my body length? Um, we wanted to make sure that that could be eliminated as best we could. And, and I know people say, well, why'd you measure it that way? It's like, it was the spot that we felt, and, and I still truly believe this, that it could be consistent. And it's easy to do. If it's hard to do, none of us are going to do it. Um, even academics get tired of doing the stuff the hard way. So... I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a few questions, but I'm going to just kind of recap. So what Dr. Bob has been talking about is the Healthy Horse app. And obviously, shameless self-promotion. We're the ones that developed that. Um, 
but what the Healthy Horse app does is it first of all breaks the horses down by breed type. So on the app, you select breed type and then you put in four body measurement that Bob so well described. You put in neck circumference at the point halfway between the pole and the withers. You put in the horse's height at the third thoracic vertebrae, which on most horses is kind of the base of the main hair, just for a general picture in your mind. We also do girth circumference at that point. Um, and then also body length from the point of a shoulder. And Bob had described the perpendicular point of the buttock. So take a clipboard or something and bring it out. You put those four measurements into the app and it estimates the horse's body weight. And as Dr. Bob alluded to previously, it also gives you an estimate of what the horse should weigh. So um, I don't know, Dr. Bob, is there anything else you want to add about the app? I, probably the good thing is, is that uh, because of the app, I got an Apple iPhone. <laughs> and and uh, uh, something else that I don't ever use, so I forget what it is. But, um, but it, you know, don't be afraid if you've got an Android or an Apple. It works, and uh, I think the fact that, and I think you can even get it in Spanish, if I remember correctly. You can, yeah. And uh, I know some people might want it in metric. If you're metri metrified, it'll it'll do that for you too. But for the vast majority of us, at the end of the day, we all deal in pounds. So, yeah, uh, I think it's a it it really has made people managing their horses have made it easier and, and uh, it, uh, it it turned out you know what started as a casual conversation over people worrying about their uh, doctor telling them what their body mass index was to saying maybe we could do that for horses because uh, and the good news is that the healthy horse app is probably as accurate or maybe more more accurate than a body mass index score just yeah to, to brag a little bit a selfish you know um yeah i believe in it because i use it awesome so one of the questions we have is you know all of this sounds fine and dandy if you have a 15 hand quarter horse but what about the extremes what if you have an ultra mini or an ultra big draft horse what resources are there for those horses? And I think you've touched base on that. But again, like you mentioned, some of those weight tapes do not go small enough or more usually don't go big enough. So what resources do people have for horses on the extreme? Unfortunately, precious few because most of the equations that have been built have been more in the, in the middle range um, that people haven't had the opportunity to uh, to go to the opposite ends of, of the spectrum. And so I think it, it really does become a huge challenge, particularly for the two examples that you meant. So that little mini, uh, I think that the Healthy Horse app is gonna be your best bet because I doubt that anybody has looked at as many of the, that size. Um, the other thing with the, the draft horses and, and where you really will run into this as you're doing your measurements, and again, not to plug the, the app, but I think it's the one resource that, that at least took that into account, is we made sure that we actually had a weather height stick that went taller than the average one does, because we did have horses that were in that 19 hand area, and thank goodness we had a stick that would get there. Uh, because that would have been, you know, a huge issue. And so that, that becomes the thing because for all those other things and certainly heart girth tapes, um, I've never seen one higher than about 1,375 pounds. That's, that's the biggest one I've been able to buy. Uh, and the, the minis, boy, to, to get one that'll get down there in that 200 pound range, um, again, you're not gonna find one because nobody has taken the, the time or had the need, which sounds really terrible, but that's kind of what it is um, to go, go and deal with those. I know there's a couple of groups out there that are looking at developing a, a heart girth tape for draft horses. Um, I've heard the population they're gonna look at and it's a lovely population, but um, I, I hope they will then go from 
draft horses, but look at draft horses that are more than one breed because uh, what we see with Clydesdales from a morphometric standpoint and what we see with Percherons is quite a bit different. Uh, Clydesdales tend to be a little longer bodied, uh, still pretty deep through the heart girth, but a little longer bodied uh, versus Percherons that are a little closer coupled and really deep through the body. And so the relationship uh, becomes quite a bit different. And then when we throw in the Shires and the Belgians and you know the, all the other ones that are there, uh, unless you have something that's looked at as many examples of the breed, uh, it's gonna be really tough. And, and you know the other equations are just for horses, period. Um, not specific, and that becomes the issue. Good luck with the the ultra mini because the hard part about the little ones is that when we estimate what they weigh and then we estimate what they could eat, it's not very much. And I think as a lot of horse people, we look at it and think, oh gosh, this, this, surely it's got to be more than a cup, but it's not. And that becomes the challenge. Yeah, and you know, a, a lot of times with those two types of horses, weight issues are challenging to manage, right? Our minis tend to be easy keepers and the amount you can feed, you know, 2% body weight on a 200 pound mini is not a lot of hay. And mm -hmm. then on the flip side, you have an easy keeping 1800 pound draft horse you know, body weight estimation becomes really important in those extremes. Of course, it's important for all horses, but it can become even more important with those extremes. Well, and, and the other time that it be, you know, if we've got one that we're either trying to gain weight or lose weight, I mean, having a target that I, I know, I mean, in all other classes of livestock, we deal with a target gain. Um, that's what makes this a little easier is that we have a more defined target to help people work through that. I'm actually working with a lady right now and our target is not gain, but loss. Yes. And it's, it's really challenging because we're getting to the point where it's like, and, and she did the one thing that we always want horse owners. And as an agronomist, Krishona, you'll appreciate this. She bought some lovely hay. <laughs> it is so nutritious. I almost want to eat it. And it's like, well, this is really making it hard because it's doing the job we want it to but it's doing it too well so yeah. and that that would be the other thing and probably the, the place to from a body weight standpoint if you're buying hay right now if you know what your horses weigh you know how much to buy whereas if you just guess hopefully you will guess high because none of us in april want to be counting to the last two bales in the hay storage area, knowing that we have another month to go. It's kind of like that old saying about, you know, your income, there's there's more, more months left to go and there's no income left to fill it. We don't want our hay to be that way. Uh, so knowing what we're dealing with makes it a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. And you know, that wasn't even a benefit of, that we talked about for estimating body weight, is it really does help you estimate hay needs because if yep. we estimate our, our horse eats two, two and a half percent of its body weight of hay a day, you can multiply how many days on hay you need, multiply that by the number of horses in their body weight, throw in a little extra for waste, and you have a pretty good estimate for your yearly hay. And really the same could, could go for any kind of concentrate or ration balance or products that you are um, feeding as well. Because I would rather spend the money that I need to. I don't want to run out. But I also maybe don't want to have tons of hay left over or, you know, too many bags of feed. I, I, I'd like to be able to keep things going on. And it just, it's a management strategy that uh, we all need to have. And uh, I know for certainly starting out early on when there really wasn't much available to us, that was a long, long time ago. Uh, you know, it was kind of by guess and by golly. It's it, as simple as knowing how much your hay bales weigh, uh, how much your horses weigh, all of that sort of stuff is just information that makes you a better horseman. Yeah, absolutely. And um, 
Uh, you know, our, our time always goes so fast, Dr. Bob. It, it does. goes so fast. We, we're not even going to cover body condition scoring. I think there's great YouTube videos and great online resources, but I'm going to give everyone online just a last chance to ask any questions, but I've just made some notes here and I'm just going to recap um, our conversation. So the reasons that we want to estimate body weight is nutrition reasons, estimating how much they should eat, even buying hay, um, dewormer and other medications. I um, mean, then really just to track any health changes, weight gain or weight loss. We, the, the really the, the, with the exception of the scale, which most of us don't have access to, the three primary ways that we know work to some degree to estimate horse body weight is using the, 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 the weight tapes, the, the, the girth measurement essentially. Um, using the equations, which you said, Dr. Bob, most horses, it's heart girth squared times body length divided by 330. I'm sure any of you that have ever had an equine class, you've had to memorize that equation. And then of course the healthy horse app, which includes more measurements. And then how often should you be doing um, or estimating body weight? Uh, at least quarterly, perhaps monthly, but because weight changes take some time, you probably don't need to do it more than once a month. Once a quarter is probably great, especially in an area where you have seasonal changes that are pretty distinctive. And then finally, some notes about being consistent. Consistently measure that heart girth. Make sure your horse is standing on a level, firm surface. Consistently measure that body length. And interestingly, horses are always bigger around than they are long using these body length measurements, which is completely different than measuring for a winter blanket. So Dr. Bob, I hope I've summarized our conversation well. Are there any last points you want to add about the summary or just estimating horse body weight in general? Um, probably the biggest thing, that was a great summary, Priscilla, is just be aware, watch. Um, you will see some changes and, and we didn't get to go into body condition, maybe we can do that at a later date, but. Um, when you get on the ride, you know, you're grooming your horse, are you noticing anything, are you feeling anything, are you, are, just pay attention because as, as you said, it, you know, it's subtle, but you see them every day and sometimes uh, we might miss it. And part of it is just because we're not paying attention. So just think about that. Think about, you know, that horse outside, um, he's grown a big winter hair coat because he lives in Minnesota. Uh, but pay attention, just pay attention. And, you know, speaking of hair coat, don't leave the blanket on all winter long. Take that sucker off and at least look at your horse, <laughs> you know, hopefully at least once a week daily because the blanket and the winter hair coat can hide a lot of problems. Yes, and, and you're not being a gift. If not being a good horseman, I mean, uh, it'd be great if it could be daily. Um, weekly would be no longer than that. No longer than that. Yeah. And even just from a safety standpoint, making sure the blanket fits, there's no rips and tears. We all know that horses can be pretty hard on blankets and you don't want loose pieces hanging over. They can get caught on things or even just get it through a leg and cause it a wreck. Oh, yes. Yes. Lots, well, lots to think about. Lots to think about. Well, I cannot thank you enough for joining Dr. Bob and myself talking about our first Extension Horses monthly how-to series on how to estimate horse body weight. Um, next month in October, I will be joined by Dr. Carrie Williams from Rutgers, and we will be discussing how to properly select equine supplements. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next month. Thank you.